Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, part two, I'll be continuing where I left off with the underdrawing and placing in now the rich colours and the aliveness to the movement. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. This is where we left it in part one. Now I need to add the rich colours now and mainly I use Caran Dash for that or just a little bit heavier with the other pastels. Um, but here's a selection of Caran Dash pencils of, I'm trying out. So I'm just experimenting to see what combination might work. So that's what I tend to do, just to save a little bit of time, just mix a, a, a few colours together and just to see how uh, to approach it and it saves a lot of time and it's uh, surprising what you might come up with but these things will change as you continue with the drawing because there's quite a subtleties involved and I'm using a brown and blue as well just for the shadows so I'm just mixing a bit of brown and blue there just trying that out the colours I'll be trying to start with use a bit of black as well then I I found that green which is a similar colour as well to the shadow area so I'm going to play about with that see if that works. I tend to work on three different types of procedures. First the underdrawing, then putting the rich colours and then the details. So this is like putting the rich colours in there so it's basically it's not a detailed stage as such. All it is is just trying to get more of a correct value and a colour saturation. Because on the details when I've got all the colours in place so I like to get a balance overall before I move on to the details because there's no point putting loads of work into something if it needs to be changed because uh, you know you, you put another colour in somewhere else and it throws the balance off so I like to get everything balanced first slowly by putting uh, sort of key elements here and there. It's just a case of experimenting and just seeing what works and trying different things until you get the correct procedure. And then you, c you once you've sussed it out, it becomes easier then. What I'm using as well now is a black with in the eyes. I'm trying to get the deepest shadows and the brightest bright in, and then it gives me more of an idea where the other values will lie. When I use a black I always mix a different colour with it. Uh, in this case I've used blue. Uh, I will use a little bit of red in some areas because black and red seem to really go deep uh, and, and creates a lot of depth. Just experimenting, just seeing what works. I'm using brown now and blue uh, just to create the shadows. Black can be a bit stark in some areas and you've got to be careful not to make it too dark of a value as well. So uh, blue and brown is very subtle. As a reminder of all the colours I've chosen, there's a few different ones there because you change as you, as you experiment, you just pick different pencils up. So I just wanted to show you again. Now this stage is about getting the chroma or the vibrancy correct as well as the values. Now to achieve this what I'm tending to do is use lemon yellow and mix that with other colours because this sort of makes it zingy and sort of really vibrate. Now I realise I need the cold red and warm red as well as the burnt sienna just to get that sort of vibrancy so I'm added that to the mix as well. It's just a case of just keep picking pencils up. If you find that it's not working just try something different and just keep experimenting until you're happy with the results. What I'm trying to do is get a colour which is very similar, a rich colour from the Caran Dash which is very similar but then what I do then is go over with other colours like the primary colours and and make it subtle because you can't always find the 
correct pencil colour so you always have to change it up and what I tend to do then is mix over the top just glaze over the top with the red blue and yellow and it seems to do the trick I'm just speeding this up a little bit now because I'm concerned about the length of the video and I want to spend a lot of time explaining all the splashes and how I do the water droplets and all the other things in this video so just speeding this area up now but you can see what I'm doing it's just putting rich colours in getting a, that sort of vibrancy and I tend to go lighter than I need to do then I can glaze over the top and it'll make it darker but then this brightness will shine through so try and do it lighter to start with the rich colours and then glaze which will darken it but you'll still get that sort of vibrancy shining through the glazes if you're enjoying this video why not subscribe it's absolutely free and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos Just slowing it down to real time now, just so you can see how I'm glazing over the light area I've put underneath. So I've used like a Caran Dash white, but then I just glaze over that. And then you work in the subtleties then, so putting a slightly lighter area here and a darker area here. It's, it's just a case of just keep playing about, changing things up. Um, I'm using like I say the brown and blue to create shadows putting the white in first if I think something needs to be glowier put a bit of white in first then go over them so what I did there I put a bit of white in then went over with lemon yellow and burnt sienna but that white shine through then and then I'm going with a bit of black here just creating that sort of depth I want but not too black but the thing is the eye needs to go to the bird so it needs to be sharp and contrasty around the head of the bird so that's what I'm spending a quite a lot of time with this area because when you see the picture when it's finished your eye hopefully will go straight to the bird and then you'll feel it going out of the picture you'll feel the movement because the beak is leading the eye out as well and the position of the actual bird within the picture frame as well it creates that feeling of it flying outwards now what i'm used here is lemon yellow out of the caran dash and also the vermilion red which is the warm red mixed together so cold and warm colors together really create zinginess so that's what I've used there to bring that body of the bird out and then I've used brown and blue again for the shadows and a bit of burnt sienna here and there. I've gone back onto the other area now around the head and putting more detail into there because now I've put the rich colours in it's made me realize some areas of that needs changing that's why I don't put detail in straight away because things change as you put more color in now on these feathers I'm using the same principle again just using a premix color first it might not be the exact color um, but if it's got that sort of right feel to it, the glow to it, you can always glaze over the top to change it but that same glow it has will shine through the colour. So that's what I tend to do. Now I'm aware that I need to keep this really soft and sort of loose so I'm keeping my, my hands quite away from that point so keeping the marks quite loose because I want this to sort of have movement, uh, flapping wings. So you've just got to just randomly put these, this colour over and glaze over. Um, the way I'm doing it is actually by not doing it. It's, it's weird to say, but the more I let go and don't think about something, just open the heart and let it happen, the more it just does. Um, the key thing is keep out of the way if you try and name these things like or oh, you know I've got feathers to do now it, it can create tension and it could create it look stiff if you're not careful 
um, you can overwork an area as well so while I'm working on this I'm aware of everything and trying to keep a balance of how it feels and um, like I say the, the more you just open up your heart let go of the mind and have faith and don't name anything just be in the moment and just really enjoy the feeling and be one with the bird be one the, with the environment around the reference image what you see and just keep just keep playing with it it's all fun really it's all all play uh, it's best not to take things serious and just just enjoy creating nature and creating color and beauty Now onto the water. Uh, it's a case of getting that freshness about it now and the sparkle. And that's achieved by, again, using these Caran d'Ache colours underneath uh, the glaze you put on the top. So it's the same sort of procedure of what I've done with the bird, but it, all it is is just sensing the water. So what I do is sense the coolness of it, the, the wetness of it, just be one with the element and just let go and just try not to think about all these different splashes and that because it'll drive you crazy. Be as close as you can to what the reference image, but it doesn't have to be exact. It's just as long as it's got that movement. And all I'm doing is using red, blue and yellow over premix colors and just using a Rembrandt white stick as well to get the real bright highlights and then just shaping it up with the Caran d'Ache and just a case of glazing like I've done basically the same as what I've done with the bird but it's just with the water. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my Patreons for all the generous support every month. I really appreciate it, it means the world to me. Now if you're considering joining me on Patreon and would like the benefit of longer, slower and more in-depth videos, please check the link in the description below for more details. This pastel painting of the Kingfisher will be in my Patreon at some point. It'll be the whole of the footage, close to real time, so you'll see every mark I make. Now I'm speeding this up just to show you how I've done the background. So I've used the grey just to mist it up just at the front of the bird to create more of a 3D feel to it. So it hopefully will feel as though it's flying out of the picture frame because it's like misty at the front of the bird and then behind the bird I'm going to have it darker. So it'll feel as though it'll, it'll have that illusion of it flying out. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends. It will mean so much to me as this will help the channel to grow. For the water droplets, what I'm intending to do is just to mark them out really first with the Carbofello. But to get that real brightness, I'm sort of twisting the point of the pencil. And on the pastel mat, it's because it's a sanded board, It'll, it'll grab more pigment and it'll make it brighter. I'm using lemon yellow and burnt sienna to create reflections in the water droplet. In some places there's a bit of grey as well in there which you'll see me do later. How I tattled these was just using the Carbofello white, just lightly marking the areas where they're going to go first. And then I'll go over this with brighter, fresher colours. But first drawing them out, just getting the position. Make sure the point's sharp and just give it a twist and they'll find that the more pigment just grabs onto the pastel mat. Just slowing it down to real time now so you can see how I'm drawing this one out because it's quite a nice little 
water droplet it's got reflections in it and that so it gives you an idea how I'm doing it so I'm just drawing it out again like with the carbothello first and then just twisting the Caran d'Ache white on there which is more of a richer pigment so it makes it stand out more Now I'm using lemon yellow, burnt sienna in the actual subtleties of the water droplet and occasionally I might put a little bit of black if it needs it as well just to give it that sort of contrast. It's a case of just experimenting just to see what works. just speeding things up now so the length of the video is not too long uh, you've got an idea how I do these uh, water droplets now so it's exactly the same procedure on everyone I've done now if you stand up while you're doing your pastels like I do this is a great tool to have it's a bob stick all it is is a piece of stick with a bit of cushioning on the end really uh, I use it for my oil paintings but it's ideal really it just saves putting the paper down because what's great about using that you can still see the whole of the painting while you're putting the details in areas um, and you're not smudging anywhere but if I put a sheet of glassine paper on there I can't see and I can't feel the balance because while I'm drawing these droplets, I'm sensing everything. I'm sensing the movement of the bird. I'm sensing how it feels, the aliveness, the freshness, and trying to create that rather than just trying to draw every droplet. I'm just letting it happen. I'm just feeling it, letting it flow. Now I've got all the droplets in there it's a case of just getting the freshness in the water so I'm just opening up seeing the whole image and just feel the freshness and the aliveness and the movement and just try and create that by just letting go and just letting it happen I've signed my painting in the bottom right hand corner and I tend to sit back after I've done that and just to see what needs to be done and I notice that more droplets needed to be put in on the top of the painting. Here's a look at the finished pastel painting at the correct angle rather than being in perspective on the easel. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you haven't seen part one here's a link to take you straight there and also other videos you might be interested in. Thanks for watching the video right till the end. Bye for now, take care.